I would do to have the kind of faith it takes to climb out of this boat and then under the crashing waves. Hi, my name is PJ McClure. I'm a best selling author, speaker, personal mentor to business owners and executives around the world, and I'm the founder of a company called The Mindset Maven. And today in Spiritual Seeds, I want to talk to you about what my personal focus is and the focus that I'm working through our whole company and with all of our clients on for 2012. And that focus is remembering that this is the year of the bold. Now, as I've told people that, I've already had to explain what I meant by it, so I thought I would just start here right at the beginning of the year in Spiritual Seeds and tell you what I mean by the year of the bold. I mean boldly, each of us individually, boldly embracing and stepping into the gifts that God has knit within all of us, and then embracing and seeking and staying in the middle of God's will for our individual lives as we express and as we step fully into those gifts. See, I believe that, I don't believe, I know, we're shown in Scripture that God has knit a gift into each and every one of us. It is not the same, and it is not necessarily meant to be used the same for every single person. But we each have a gift that was divinely placed within us that is part of God's will for our lives. And most of us have spent most of our lives, especially ever since it was beat out of us as a kid, to stop look, looking at those gifts, to stop going after those gifts. Those are the things that we were told were either you know pie in the sky or daydreaming, things like that. Very often those are people's gifts trying to come out of them, trying to stir them, but were being sent away. And what I'm asking each and every one of us to do is to get in and to look for and embrace and release those gifts in 2012 and to do it boldly, to do it in a way that we know that we're honoring God with every single step that we're stepping into this gift. And the scripture reference that I wanted to give you that comes out of that is from 2 Timothy, first chapter, verse 6, where Paul writes to Timothy that he wants to remind him to stir up the gift of God that is within him, to stir it up, to get it going, to make it really something, okay, to not let it lie dormant, to agitate it almost, to make it come out and to do something. That is the stirring up. That is boldness. That is what we need in this day and age, in our families, in our churches, in our businesses, in our communities, in each and everything we do. We need a boldness, but that boldness is sustainable because it comes from our gifts and we step in and we do that so how do we recognize our gifts if I say everybody has one how do we even recognize what it is and then further how do we move into the will of God we're going to talk about that a lot this year but I want to hit it very quickly in this just some high points to give it to you the first thing we do is we stop ignoring that still small voice that each of us has if you're not hearing it, it's because the world around you is too loud and you're allowing it to be too loud. That still small voice is your desires. They are the pulls, the things that are drawing you to something, the things that are your interests, the things that you are incredibly passionate about if you're allowed to be. Okay, All of those things are indications of your gift, of the gift that God has sown within you. Now, just going after our desires and our passions and our interests by itself is not enough. That is enough to recognize our gift. That is not necessarily enough to expand it. And it's certainly not enough to make sure that we're moving into the will of God with it. Because everybody has one. Therefore, even the people who are doing amazingly horrible things or you know things that are without a doubt not the things of God doesn't mean they don't have a God-given gift. It means they're not using it to honor God. So that is a major key. We're wanting to stir up our gifts to honor God and move forward into that. So the second thing we have to be able to do is move into His will. So how do we do that? First of all, we recognize those desires that are within us because God knit them into us. So that's number one. He knit that desire into you to draw you into His will. So the second thing, once you're starting to recognize that and you see that and you see your urges and desires and your passions and your interests, confirm it with Scripture. Is what you're drawn to scripturally sound? Is it in the Word? Can you see those things and can you be confirmed in the Word? Or does Scripture give you something that is completely the opposite of it? Are you running contrary to the Word of God? If you are, then you can be pretty sure you're not within His will. Okay? We know that if we are not within the Word, 
we are against it. And that's a bad thing, okay? That's not where we want to be. So what are your desires? That still small voice. What does the Word of God say about it? Okay, are you drawn? Where are you going? And there are plenty of references. There are people you can go talk to. Talk to a pastor. Talk to somebody that can get into the Word with you and show you what it is that you're looking for if you're not able to do that yourself. And then the third thing is, look around at your circumstances. Okay, God draws our gifts out of us. He draws our interests to pull us into certain places. When we know that what it is we desire to do is in alignment with Scripture, then we can look around at our circumstances and see, okay, has, has God placed me someplace where this can be used? Do my circumstances show me that this is a useful thing, that I can do this to honor God? And very often, if we just step in and we're willing to step in and be bold, God will move things around us to present us with situations. That's the waiting upon the Lord. That's not sitting on your butt and hoping something happens. That's stepping into the fullness of your gift and allowing God to move the circumstances around you so that you can see where it needs to be applied so that He can use you to make those things happen. And it's also kind of funny that in that just below that scripture that I referenced that Paul also wrote, wrote one of the things, one of the scripture references that I, I've known my entire life, or I've heard my entire life anyway, and that's 2 Timothy 1.7. And this is what I want to leave you with to encourage you and to give you the willingness to move forward. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. He's not going to call you into your gift so that you can be fearful of it. If you step into your gift, if you keep your eyes on what God has for you, you are going to be able to move forward boldly and to receive rewards that are uncommon by human standards. So 2012, the year of the bold, the year of boldly moving into your gifts and living smack dab in the center of God's will. That's where I'm praying for myself to be and going to be working very hard to be, and that's where I'll be praying for you to be as well. This is PJ McClure, the Mindset Maven. God bless and be your best. Tells me.